Okay, this is exciting. We're going to do an experiment. Okay, so this is lesson two, part two, conducting the experiment. So let's get started. Okay, so we already talked about the investigation question. What we're trying to figure out is how does air get energy? And um, when we ask how air gets energy, what we're really asking about is energy transfer. We want to know how the energy is transferred to the air. So we have these two claims. We have claim one, which is basically saying that energy is transferred from the sun to the air. And we have claim two, that energy is transferred from the sun to the surface, and then from the surface to the air. So in this experiment that we're about to do, because it's a model, each of the parts of the experiment actually represents something else. So in this experiment, we have the sun, which is represented by the lamp. And when the lamp is on, that means it's daytime and the earth is um, receiving energy from the sun. The, the next thing we have is we have the rocks, which represent the surface of the earth. And those are set right on the edge of the table so that the lamp is hanging over we have one side that has um, no surface, and then the other side has a surface which is rep represented by the rocks. And then finally, the last part is, uh, move that, the air represents the air just above Earth's surface. So let's move this up here so we can see the air. We have the air that doesn't have surface below it, and we have the air that does have surface below it. Okay. So... We have the two claims, and claim one says that energy is transferred from the sun to the air. So as the energy travels across space from the sun, once it hits Earth's atmosphere, it begins to transfer energy, and the molecules in the atmosphere start speeding up, getting more kinetic energy, and therefore their temperature begins to increase. So if claim one were true, would you expect the air temperature with no surface, so we're talking about the side that doesn't have a surface, would you expect the temperature there to, to go higher, to go lower, or to stay the same as the air above the surface? So think about what your thoughts are about that. Take a moment to pause the video and record your ideas in your notebook. Um, or on a piece of paper, just to make sure that you kind of have a sense of what you'd expect from claim one. Okay, welcome back. I hope you did pause it. If you didn't pause it for real, pause the video, write down your thoughts, and then hit play again. Okay, so for claim two, if that were true, what would you expect? So claim two is that energy is transferred from the sun to the surface of the earth. Um, passes right through the atmosphere without, without affecting it at all, and then from the surface to the air. And so if claim two were true, would you expect the air temperature with no surface underneath to be higher, lower, or the same as the air above the surface? So in both times, think about the air with no surface, and what do you think would happen if claim two is true then would any energy be transferred to the air with no surface at all? If we look here at the difference here, this is showing the air with no surface and energy would transfer. And with claim two, it doesn't look like this air can transfer. I meant that the energy can transfer to the air. So let's talk about setting up this experiment. Um, in a moment, I'll show you the experiment that I have set up here at my house and show you the equipment. And if you have similar equipment at your house or you can get it, you can set it up. Otherwise, you can watch me and I'll collect the data for us. So we will measure the temperature of the air at two locations and at two times. The first time will be the starting temperature of the air at both locations. And the second time, will be the temperature at both locations after 20 minutes under a lamp. So we're gonna measure the temperature above a surface and above no surface. So this is how I have the experiment set up. I have, um, it's called a ring stand. You don't have to use that, but I have a lamp that's clamped onto the ring stand. And then I've set it, so I've pushed it right to the edge of the table so that the lamp, and I'll show this to you in more detail in a moment, 
so that the lamp is kind of hanging over the edge like the picture right here is showing just like this and then I piled up some rocks on the side to represent the surface of the earth and then on the other side um, there's there's no surface and then I took two digital thermometers and I set them so they're exactly the same height. So the one that's over the rocks, I had to place on a small box to get it to be at the same height. And the other one, I clamped a ring stand so that I could suspend the thermometer so it, cause it can't float in thin air, as awesome as that would be. And so they're both at the same height. And we want that to be true because then we're measuring the temperature of the air that's the same distance from the lamp. And that thermometer, represents the air in the atmosphere right above the surface and right um, without a surface. Okay, so what you're going to need to do for this part is you're going to need to make a data table. So in your notebook, just quickly make, um, it looks like four columns and three rows. And in the first column, we have um, the starting air temperature, well it's actually like the second column in, but the starting air temperature, that's before the lamp's turned on. In this, the next column we have the final air temperature, which is after the lamp has been on for 20 minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simply do a quick subtraction problem, which is what's the change in the air temperature? So we take the final and we subtract the starting to find out what the change was. Okay, all right, so pause the video right here so that you can create this table. And I will move my picture off of here so that you can see the whole thing. And um, once you're done making your table, then turn the video back on and we'll collect some data together. Hi, okay, so I've moved my camera and I'm trying to make the shot so you can see the action which is happening right here. So the first thing we need to do is record the temperature that's right here. And if you kind of, you can kind of see that it's hanging out just above the rocks, but not touching the rocks. Okay, so the temperature for this one, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. And I want you to notice that right now it's set at Celsius, which is exactly what we want. And so we're going to place it over here and we're going to record what the temperature is of that. And then this one that's hanging out just above the air it's on and if I look at that one I can see that this one uh oh that's set for Fahrenheit we can't use Celsius and Fahrenheit so I'm gonna switch it so that this one also reads Celsius okay so they've been hanging out here and because there's no energy that's happening here they should be the same temperature okay um, but they're not. They're slightly different. So we'll take that into consideration when we um, do our final, um, our final data. So the one that's above the surface is currently set at 23.6 degrees Celsius. So in your table right here where it says air above the surface, that's the starting temperature, that's that first empty box. You're going to write 23.6 degrees Celsius. Okay, the other side says the air with no surface. So this side right here that's just hanging out and there's, there's nothing under here but air, that is set at 22.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so Right now the temperature is a little bit off, but that's okay, that just sometimes happens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the lamp on. You can see it just got a lot brighter in here, ooh, that's right on my face. Remember that this represents the sun, and we are going to set the timer for 20 minutes. And I'm just going to use my cell phone as a timer, so I'll go ahead and hit start. And um, there it goes. So we'll come back together in 20 minutes. Okay, my timer is going off. It's been 20 minutes. I'm going to stop it. Okay, so with this here, we have the following data. This is pretty exciting. The thermometer that is over the surface is now reading at 28.0 degrees Celsius. 
And so you can add that right here. This is the air above the surface. The second column is 28.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then the air with um, this over here, where there's nothing below this, the table just drops off. You can kind of see that. I'll move it over so you can see that there's nothing down here. It's just air. That one is reading, it actually increased a little too. It's reading at 26.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, now that we've collected our data, let's, um, let's take a look at it together. Let's sort of analyze it. So we see that both of um, the different setups that the temperature did increase. With um, the air above the surface, the temperature increased by 4.4 degrees Celsius. And with the air that had no surface underneath, the temperature increased by 3.5 degrees Celsius. So although they both increased, the air above the surface increased by almost an entire degree Celsius more than the air with no surface. So we're going to want to collect more evidence from the sim to, to come up with our final ideas. But before we do that part, let's just take a moment to, um, to have a couple of discussion questions. So you can write down your answers to these questions in your notebook. You can turn and talk to the person that you're doing this lesson with, either because they're in the room with you or because you're on the phone or texting them, or your teacher might ask you to respond to these questions on um, online or in a Schoology page. So question one, what happened in the experiment? Question two, did the results support claim one or claim two? And what did you learn from the experiment that might help you answer the question we're trying to investigate, which is how does air even get energy? All right, so you can pause the video on this screen so that you can answer the questions and I'll meet you in lesson two, part three.